Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in to this week's episode of Back to the Fluture, your favorite podcast slash vodcast slash educational video series slash we don't even know what to call it anymore. <laughs> this week we're going to be talking about instrumentation and composition during the Renaissance. Taking place in the 14th to 17th century, the Renaissance period was a period of rapid European cultural, academic, and political growth and advancement. It promoted the rediscovery of the arts, such as literature, visual art, and music. Because of these advancements, the Renaissance is credited with fueling the transition of the Middle Ages into modern-day civilization. The vocal styles of the Renaissance all included smoothly blending different melodies written especially for the voice, normally without any instrument accompaniment. This style is known as a cappella and was very popular and prominent at the time. Another widely used form of music was polyphony. Polyphony can be credited as the reason why you can play instruments other than flute or alto sax in concert band. Isn't that incredible? Before the Renaissance period, most of the great music was sung in large choirs and in churches in the form of monophony. This form of music emerged from the Middle Ages and consisted of a single line of Gregorian chant sung by all singers in unison with little to no variation. However, as the Renaissance progressed, this form of music developed into polyphony. In this form, the composer would blend and weave two or more independent melodic lines to be sung at the same time, creating harmony. Polyphonic writing also allowed the composer to use cantus firmus. Cantus firmus is the fixed melody of a piece and served as the base of the piece. Music was an extremely important ritual in church during the Renaissance period. In the 13th century, sacred music, also known as the Catholic school nightmare, was normally monophonic Gregorian chant. But as this period progressed, sacred music or mass began to include motets and hymns, which were still heavily based on the sacred music style of the 13th century. In Renaissance sacred music, motets were choral compositions with no instrumental accompaniment and were based on sacred Latin texts. The composer would write motets for three, four, or more voices to sing together, and generally based it on cantus firmus. In the Renaissance period, music was not only important in the church, but was also a large part of people's day-to-day -day lives. Music played outside the church was called secular music. During this era, music was considered essential in the proper upbringing of daughters and sons, though it was not among the most important lessons for them. During the Renaissance period, it was common for homes to have lutes and various keyboard instruments because at-home music making was becoming increasingly popular. This is because members of the middle class were now also making music, not only the professional musicians and the wealthy. In the Renaissance, poetry and music were united, and two important music genres of this period emerged, the chanson and the madrigal. Both of these genres were used to magnify the beauty and the meaning of the poetry. In the 15th century, the chanson was popular among dukes and the kings of France. Chansons were usually polyphonic and were composed for three or four voices. Chansons us usually included the courtly love verses from popular French poets. A popular chanson composer was Josquin Desprez. One of his greatest works, the chanson Mille Regrets, A Thousand Regrets, is considered one of the most beautiful and amazing works from the Renaissance period. The madrigal is similar to the chanson. It is an unaccompanied piece of secular music sung by three to six people or two to eight people. During the Renaissance era, music was based on modes as opposed to the tonal systems that had been used in prior eras. Composers started creating a smooth sound since music in this period often relied heavily on vocals. To achieve a smooth vocal effect, the range of notes in one line of harmony was quite small, but combined with other harmonies, the range of one song was large. The Renaissance era also brought about more complicated rhythms and longer phrases. Many people would get together to perform in this era. Harmonies became more prevalent because more people would sing and play in more ranges. Pieces often consisted of four parts. Music in this era also put emphasis on blending the notes and creating consonants instead of the dissonance used prior. 
This can be seen in the increased use of thirds by composers. All of this ties into the main idea of, pol of polyphony, or the idea of adding unique harmonies, increasing the smooth flow of a piece and blending of all the parts. The musical developments made during the Renaissance led to the creation of many different instruments. These ranged from wind instruments, such as the kirtal, to string instruments, such like the lyre de braccio. The creation of families of instruments, ranging from high voices to low voices, became popular due to the use of polyphony in composition. For the same reason, larger ensembles became more prominent. Purely instrumental music of the Renaissance consisted of concert music and dances. Instruments were also prominent in secular music. The Renaissance brought with it the creation of instruments which were over time modernized into the ones we still use today. Some of which are the sacbut, which preceded the trombone and is indeed spelt like sackbut, the sham, which preceded the oboe, and the kirtal, which preceded the bassoon. Many other instruments were further developed during the Renaissance to expand their range and musical potential. Some of the instruments developed during the Renaissance were the sackbut, the slide trumpet, the sham, the kirtal, the cornet, the viol, the viola, the crumb horn, the racket, the cornmuse, the bagpipe, the hurdy-gurdy, the lyre, the lute, the lyre de braccio, the gittern, the mandor, the tambourine, the transverse flute, and many more. Families of instruments were also created because, you know, everyone needs a friend. And also because polyphony was a thing and they needed high and low instruments. The printing press changed the musical world. Music no longer had to be printed by hand, allowing for a broader and quicker distribution of music, and therefore resulting in musical literacy spreading dramatically. Giovanni Pierluigi da Palestrina was born in a small town, but moved to Rome when he was a child. In Palestrina, he played the organ, sang, and taught music. While selling crops from his parents' farm, he sang and was recognized by the Santa Maria Maggiore choir master, who later offered to teach him. Because he wrote many composed pieces for the church, like many composers of the time, in the 16th century he was appointed a member of the Papal Church. One of his well-known works was the Misa Pape Marcelli, which was a Renaissance Mass. With the lack of female artist representation during the Renaissance, the Concerto delle Donne were the first notable female artist group of their time and were professional. That being said, they were part of a court that had them perform secretly. Thanks for tuning into this episode. Now let's just review everything we went over. In the transition between the Middle Ages and the Renaissance, the main things that changed musically were the ideas of polyphony, consonants, secular performances, and the use of instruments. Polyphony is the idea of adding unique harmonies and increasing the flow of a piece. It also created the use of cantus firmus, which is the pre-existing melody that is the basis of polyphony. The emergence of secular music, or music played outside the church, was another prominent change in the musical scene of the Renaissance. This was helped by the invention of the printing press, which allowed for a broader and quicker distribution of music. Sacred music also grew in this period, churches hiring composers such as Giovanni Pierluigi de Palestrina. Harmonies became more prevalent and the consonants of notes grew. Instruments were created and used during the Renaissance, some of which were adapted into the ones we still use today. All in all, this is a short summary of the musical development that took place in the Renaissance era. Thanks again for tuning into this week's episode of Back to the Future, and we'll see you next week with an in-depth look on the Baroque period.